Welcome to the Theory of DFS podcast. I'm Jordan Cooper, the co-author of the Theory of Daily Fantasy Sports. 15-hour audio DFS masterclass you can find at theoryofdfs.com. Join with me this episode. The, one of my favorite poker authors, I just wanted to show you, Ed. I have the hard copies. I got. I, I oh, my goodness. You really do. Yes. I, I yeah. like because I like reading them in the bathroom or anything like that. Not just on my phone. <laughs> it's good bathroom reading. Agreed. Right. Well, but yeah. I, 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 I reread poker books. So it's not like, you know, if I'm going to go I mean, play for a while. Fair I'm enough. Gonna, right. Fair enough. And, and I, I've been reading your stuff for decades. Uh, I read your first sports betting book, The Logic of Sports Betting, that I would consider to be required reading if you're in if you're involved in any type of gambling any type of sports betting anything daily fantasy uh i think it's very important uh what what you teach in that book it's not like groundbreaking stuff but it's one place to have like this is how sports books operate and your new book came out today as of this recording indeed Interception, yes. the secrets of modern sports betting and yes. you're here to give out the secrets. I mean, all the secrets, every every last <laughs> secret. It's all uh, all laid bare today. Uh, to to, fr to frame our, our conversation today, uh, I I wanted to highlight that you know this show is primarily based around daily fantasy sports, right? I yep. teach you know the courses in game theory of DFS, primarily yep. GPPs, but I guess cash games are you know they, you don't have to think about less stuff. Right? So the first thing is that do you believe that those that are looking to transition or some of their volume from DFS to sports betting, very similar to how poker players became better at DFS quicker than people that have like more traditional sports knowledge. Do you right. believe that sports betting especially in like the player prop markets and the derivatives and the in play and the SGPs that if you're profitable in DFS, that you probably have a little bit of a knowledge skill gap kind of leg up on taking advantage of sports betting markets in that particular. I mean, I think it's obviously true. <laughs> I, I think I think that has to be true, right? Like, um, you know, I don't. I haven't played DFS in a while. Uh, I actually started my sports. I I got into sports from poker via DFS. That was my uh, entry into the sports stuff. You know, period. Um, you know, and 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 my angle was I knew very little about the day to day of sports. I, I kind of still know. Not, I mean, people can run circles around me about their actual sports knowledge, um, but uh, you know, I I immediately identified it as a game theory thing. I was like, I was like, this is a game where the casual person is going to approach it based on like, oh, I know all the players, you know, and I'm like, I need to build a lineup that's correlated in this way, and blah, you know, whatever, right? Like, I'm sure you've talked about it a zillion times, and you know, and and that was my entire angle was I, I don't really know how to out project, you know, the, again, I'm talking like eight, eight years ago when I entered the DFS, it's like, I can't out project, you know, you at, at, you know, hitter projections, but I can, you know, build a lineup. It's, it's not about out projecting, you know, it certainly wasn't then, um, you know, the, the general public on, on hitter projections, it was about lineup construction and, and player usage and stack usage and, and all that stuff. And, and yeah, and I mean, that was immediately obvious. I mean, that's why I got involved in it was because I was like, here's a gambling game where the point of it is completely different from what the obvious point of it is. <laughs> and therefore I could generate an advantage for myself. And so that was my entry to the sports. And I, I think that carries over. Like, I think, um, I mean, the, the natural thing that I think is, is fairly obvious to attack um, if you have a DFS mindset or the single game parlay models. Um, so, yeah, so just to kind of give your audience a little bit of a background on kind of the books and who I am, um, the, the first book, Logic of Sports Betting, I, I would say is about sports betting markets, right? So it's about how um, 
it, it's about the markets that lie behind pricing the sports the the the, the main sports betting lines for for lack of but even even how the lines others. work because I mean there I right. I talked to plenty of profitable DFS players that aren't used to I mean I mean we in the sports betting space you'd think it's like obvious right what American odds are like what right. Converting American odds to implied probabilities. Right. Why? Why does a num? Why does a number move? How that the age yes. old question? How much is a half a point worth? Right. right? How much Indeed. is five yards worth on a receiving prop? How much? Right. You know, what key numbers on a spread or a total? That type of thing. Now, obviously, yep. in DFS, we're dealing primarily in in the prop markets, and I know that a lot of the sports betting space from what I've experienced, like it seems like 90 plus percent are looking for angles in may, maybe not major markets, but in game based markets yep. of the total of a game, the total of a half, the spread of a game and not. Right. And those are the old school markets, right? So those right. are the, those are the bets where there is a betting market, right? right? Like if you look at a football game, there is a betting market for, Maiden point spread, money line, game total, first half point, point spread, first half money line, first half total. And that's about it. There's a couple more things which you could argue have a little bit of a betting market. There's a little bit of a betting market for the the biggest player props, like the, the most popular players, et cetera. That's about it. And what do I mean when I mean there's a market? I mean, there's specific sports books that basically allow – anybody to bet and their goal is to create a market for lack of a better term and 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 then essentially generate themselves a, a little bit of commission based on the, the the trading that goes on there so but that's a very specialized it's almost a specialized sports book business model and so there's specialized sports books that kind of permit that type of action a bunch of the nerds go bet there, play their little toy game market, and then those prices that are determined from the kind of toy game market get essentially copied over into the, you know, what we call in the new book, modern sports books, right? And so modern sports books, the way I define it is these are the sports books that have the huge betting menus. So no, they don't just offer six bets. They don't just offer a point spread and a money line. They let you bet any point spread from minus 27 and a half to plus 27 and a half and they have a price for everyone and they let you bet you know they don't just let you bet patrick mahomes passing yards but you can bet in 17 different bands of patrick mahomes passing yards you can bet travis kelsey touchdowns he'll have exactly two exactly one exactly three he'll have between this you know the all that like thing where there's like a million different options to me that's that's what i define as the characteristic of the modern sports book and so the new book is about is about that type of betting which is distinct right, but, it's, but, but it's very the important yeah that, i mean i know i mean i've got a review copy i read the entire uh book i still think it's very important that even if you're going into more of the player props more of the sgps more of the the, the modern betting menus to yep. still understand how markets 100%. work and we'll, 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 we'll get we'll get into this because i i point i pointed out i gave out like outlined the three major points that i wanted to talk about on today's show that come out of the book and also one sentence that you wrote that i believe i like when i read it like i conceptualized it in a different way but your the sentence that you wrote is i think like like when we get to it, it, it it'll okay. seem so 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 minuscule, but I think it's like it it's worth it's worth the price of admit if you understand exactly what you said in that sentence, it's worth like the weight in gold. Like you, okay. you, you can buy the book seven hundred thousand <laughs> sentences. Is. Okay, well, well, we'll get to it. But yep. the other framing that I want before we get into you know uh the the, the nuances of, of the book. Is that I also believe inside of the the general, I mean, the kind of the hardcore, the online social media gambling, sports betting, DFS community, because we see this in DFS also. Yeah. Uh, is that I think there's a big disconnect. And 
poker, this is true as well. So I know that it's not analogous necessarily, but there's a big difference between uh, how you talk about playing the game of poker when it comes to uh, high-end cash games, tournaments, things right. like that, and then beating your local one, two, two, yep. five, no limit game. And a lot of times people talk past each other where I could go sit down here in Southern Indiana at the two, five game and play absurdly exploitatively. And it's not game theory optimal, but no one ever picks right. up that if they, if they check raise me every time on the turn, like they just print money but they just don't notice that like I'm value betting like absurdly right. too often in that spot and not bluffing enough. But then you talk to someone that is playing on the high end or they're trying to learn to get up to that level. And they're like, well, what are your, what do you, what bluffs are you balancing? What, what is your cold? What is your cold four bet bluffing range? And I go in my games, like that's not important. Like, right, it's not a thing. Yeah, it, uh, it's not important. <laughs> it's zero. Zero. It, it, it literally never comes up. Yeah, exactly. Right. So yep. in the sports betting space, I believe very similar to DFS that there's a DFS space where people playing five thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars a volume. They're playing 150 lineups. They're doing all all this that they're they're right. playing the second half showdowns and they're playing all like and they're. They're modeling all this stuff. They're simulating right. all this stuff. Yep, 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 and yep. There's a big difference between scaling to make money at a two to three percent rate that way, and how do I beat uh, a rando person in a one dollar head to head? Right. And if I t tell people, uh, go sign up for like Roto Grinders and just like, like, click the optimize button on the highest mean projected lineup and play it against that one dollar head to head. Uh, that's probably the best way to make money in the same way in poker. Do you have the best hand? Well, right. bet it and get called and yeah. make the money that way that I believe in the sports betting space, there is a very big difference. And it's highlighted in your book, not specifically about, I focus a lot on this show about the grinder type, the right. side hustle level of playing DFS of like, Yep. Don't come to me if you want to. How do you make three million playing DFS? It's like that's a that's a high, high, high skill. How can you play every day for an hour and make enough to pay for your family vacation? Right. I I could I could teach you how to do that right easily. Right. Sports betting, I believe, is in the same boat where I talk to people where like I'm betting on props and I'm spamming props, and people will be like or I'm doing prize picks and underdog before it was legal here in Kentucky. And then there are people that are like, uh, you know, you'd get an extra one and a half percent EV by taking this type of card on prize picks and just maxing it out. And I'm like, yeah, maybe I don't want to take on that variance. And, uh, and maybe I don't want to get like completely limited by doing. Well, that's, so, it, that's, it, that's the thing that's wrong with that mindset with the sports books is like, that mindset of oh you could squeeze out the you're not trying to maximize the ROI right which with, with sports books because if you do they'll just kick you out <laughs> I mean I I mean there's there's no two ways about it the the sports books are not looking they they don't want winning players the full stop uh, modern sports books do not want people who win therefore if you do want to win you have to be a little bit subtle about it. You know, and and all that kind of stuff that you're talking about, where like, oh, you can get more EV if you go more extreme with your. Well, all that is, makes your behavior more obvious too, right? And it just it just makes it easier for them to to identify you as someone they don't want as a customer, and then they'll, you know, cut your limits down. So. Right, but the difference in the mindset is that, and we'll get to we'll get to your point. Trust me, that's that's yeah. number three. That all of this okay. I have down. I just want I just wanted to frame this in the right way. Yeah. So that that there's a difference between like, to me, I view it as scale. Like there's a difference between making a million dollars a year sports betting and making $20,000 a year. Uh, unquestionably. Betting. It's almost a completely different skill set. 
Right. I would say. So like my, yeah. the, the, the framing of our conversation in this show and how I view sports betting is in the, the 20,000 range. Correct. Skill set and, not and, that's, a million that, and that's also the topic of the book. There, there's, there is absolutely, I, I make zero representation that you're going to read my book and, and get the million dollar winnings. We, I talk about what does that skill kind of look like, you know, in the book, but I don't, there's no, I'm not actually trying to help you get that skill set at all. The million dollars. Right. Yeah. right. So let's let's get yeah. into the the first the first topic that comes out of the book. Right. And I wrote it down the sentence as the sports book ecosystem is held together by duct tape. Because people, Ed, you talk to the layman, right? I especially when it comes to sports betting and not DFS, because DFS is peer to peer. So it's a little like, okay, I know more than the guy down my block. So People could think there's a skill in that, but people will say, well, DraftKings, FanDuel, BetMGM, Caesars, name, name your, name your favorite brand, Vegas. People will say Vegas, even though it's Vegas. Not Vegas. <laughs> they, go, they know either they got the smartest people. They got the, they got the, they got, they got all the computer nerds and everything like that. When they set a number, they know. And every number that you see when you pull up on DraftKings, if you go to Canadian uh, lacrosse, you go to Canadian second division college <laughs> lacrosse, right? And the and the and the forwards goal prop is they, minus one sixty. Yeah. That there's some there's they got some the MIT sports betting team on the job. Yeah, exactly. Right, there's some dude yeah. that knows <laughs> that. Like right. that's what people think. But I know, I know. It turns out that. Since you come from that experience with deck prism, right. that the sports betting ecosystem doesn't actually look like that. Yeah, no, no, no. So, so just the quick, the quick and dirty here is, as I said, there's a sports betting market, and the market makes a few lines for every game. And when I say the market makes the line, it's basically there's a niche, obscure sports book. I can't put it any other way. That a few overinvested nerds <laughs> bet at, and uh, they, and and again they bet there because they're allowed to bet indefinitely. They're not going to get kicked out. The sports book, if they win, they're allowed to win, and that's why that exists. That's you know that's that's the whole point of it. And yeah, and so they'll you know they'll have an opinion on a you know let's say. That sports book will put up, you know, for for football, they'll put up lines for the next Sunday. They'll put them up on Sunday night, right? And the moment those lines go up, the first wave of nerds, the kind of low stakes wave wave of nerds, say Lions minus seven and a half. My Excel spreadsheet says five and a half, you know, and they bet it. And you know, and and there's no magic that goes into those numbers that go up first. By the way, this is this is basically one person going like this, you know, whether they have an Excel spreadsheet that goes like this or, or they're just literally just, you know, winging it. I mean, they're just putting numbers up, winging it basically. And then the nerds are like, I think five and a half is better than seven and a half. So they bet. Right. But then the sports book moves. The, and this is all described in logic of sports betting. Sports book will move the line based on those bets. They, they're, fully familiar with all these customers and they say oh this guy tends to know what he's talking about so when he bets i'm gonna move the line in his favor right so that process goes on and you know the line goes like this and then it basically comes to equilibrium and then they open the limits and then the people who bet bigger weigh in and they're like okay now that i can bet bigger i'll bet on it and so it goes like this again and then so the point is the the those lines come to equilibrium over time but again those are only like six lines for the whole game Everything else on that betting menu, if you go to, you know, a large major American sports book and you see 200 different bets on the same NFL game, right? 195 of those bets, the price is not made by the nerds betting against each other. The price is made by a, a model, you know, by somebody's computer program or Excel spreadsheet or whatever you want to think of it. And the model is the one that it is basically uses the market prices as inputs and then it goes beep boop beep boop and it comes up with the price for 
the 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 derivative market right and so my background is this is what i've been doing for the last five years is i've been running a company first called deck prism and then we merged with one called huddle so the company's currently called huddle um but that's what we did so so basically i built and maintained models for you know, personally i did uh for uh six major american sports leagues you know college and pro football college and pro basketball major league baseball and nhl hockey and um the thing i was trying to maximize for was to make the very best in play lines possible so if you want to bet during the game somebody has to offer you a line you know those lines that you see on the big sports book they have to come from somewhere well where they come is they come from a company like the one we founded and where do i get them from well i have a model that i wrote that spits those numbers out basically we hire people to watch the game to take in the information as the game's happening to take in data to visually watch the game all that stuff to have opinions about what they're seeing right and then the model is designed with inputs where they can type you know they can for lack of a better term input the new information and then the model churns and it comes up with the whole new line set publishes it and that's how it works so that's how that works so so for literally for and we did this for you know major sports books that take real action right so literally it's not you know this is for nfl in play i mean i you know it's me <laughs> it's, just, it's whatever i thought the line should be or it's whatever our employee using the software i wrote thought the line should be and that's it right and, and that's the you know so if you know if you think you know better than me maybe you do i mean you easily could know better than me i mean i have the software that i built i the software is good i think it makes good prices in general but i mean i mean if you're going to tell me you know better than me because you know this quarterback is doing this and you saw you know football better than me and i mean you could be right <laughs> very easily you could be right and that's the point and, th and that's for a major thing like an in-play nfl game you want to talk about third division <laughs> canadian hurley or whatever i mean you know the amount of effort that goes into making those prices is 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 not a lot it just isn't it's well let, somebody wrote software to... once and that's it you know right because you're you're already getting into number two that comes yeah. out of the book that, that i mean that's a major topic but let's yeah. step back a little bit on why okay. those types of things happen because i think it's very important to understand the macro of what you're getting into so like that that mindset of oh well i'm using DraftKings and fanduel because they're the market leaders as right. these are billion dollar companies they got these right. resources and yep. you you look at their user interface and you look at all of this and you go that's a Dr DraftKings set this number here DraftKings set that number there well get away from whether or not it's a market or a model but right. for the most part you're not look most of the lines that you're looking at on DraftKings are not originated by DraftKings. Correct. Depending Correct. on the sport and the market and the derivative and everything, it's like it's like imagine imagine you're building a house, right? You go it's like I would like to build a new house. Well, you you're not you're probably not going to get one company that does everything right that builds houses unless you're you know obviously the you know the oversized load where they just the modular stuff you're gonna you're gonna have to get a painter you're gonna have to get a plumber you're gonna have to get an electrician you're gonna have to you have to get all these people of all different companies in order to make the house look yes. like the house yep that's what modern sports books are that's exactly how it works yes when you look at the when you look at the 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 premier league uh, goal anytime goal scoring odds it's like that's not draft kings putting it up Correct. that's some company that has been subcontracted to supply those numbers likely i, I can't sport. speak directly about exactly that model but yeah that's the idea is that draft kings is subcontract is basically buying that content from another co company that produces that content yeah right exactly so, yep so when and you, you you bring this up in the book and i think it's very important on distinguishing between the top brands and the yes. sub brands, and yes. and this this is where and it'll get into the third one about sport about sports betting is a little bit you have to think in terms of 
working for a big company like a bureaucracy. Like think of how government works. If I mean, if you're that type, that's like government can't do anything. But just in general, government tends right. to be very bureaucratic. So think of a big bureaucracy of when you look at a sports book and yes. the motivations of the actors in the bureaucracy aren't necessarily the same motivations of the overall company. So Correct. like when you take a look at the the and you mentioned you mentioned this multiple times in the book that when DraftKings, right, subcontracts for Canadian second division college lacrosse. I mean, like some like some right. absurd kind of market. Yep. Like the main priority for DraftKings is to make sure the numbers are like there's so much duct tape that make sure that if someone wants to bet on it, that they don't show up and there's nothing there. And Correct. then we'll worry about how efficient those numbers are later. And Correct. the content provider. Their imperative, on the other hand, isn't to make the best numbers, but to make sure that their bots, DraftKings, doesn't yell at them because the lines aren't up early enough. So you get this 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 bureaucratic type of mentality inside of the sportsbook ecosystem where the concern is more about uptime than it is about accuracy. So whenever you I mean, look too, at I, I can't that, overemphasize that point. I mean, when we had complaints from customers, I mean, uptime. It was like, why aren't you up? Why isn't this up? Why isn't that up? What's going on with this game? Why isn't it up? Why isn't it up? That's the concern. Why? Why? When I go on my, I'm the sports book, and I go to this game, and I don't see anything I could bet on. That's the complaint. The complaint is very, very, and it's, you know, we had some very demanding customers for our business because we honestly did business with people that let high stakes winning betters bet, you know? So, you know, they were, they did care more about the the pricing, but even then it was a second thought, even with the most, in my opinion, the most demanding customers in the world, as far as the pricing, you know, the number of comments we got about making sure it was up and working versus why was your price here? Like, it's just, you know, it's just 10 to one. It's just, the concern is, is it available to bet? That's, very much the concern. But similar in a bureaucracy, consider the, the smaller players. Yep. You mentioned this in the book also. So yep. if you're if you're looking for an angle, right, on a book that is very niche, very low market value, you know, it's some, it may be in the United States. It may be, you know, the, right. the 12th brand in a state that right. has like less than 1% of the volume that you would think, Right. One would think it's like, oh, if you're betting at you, you always mention beaver bet in the book. Right. That's why. Yeah. Right. Like, I try not to bet, mention the actual brand names in the book. So right. my, right. my, my, see, my two sports books are beaver bet and bet beaver. Those are my two. Right. So beaver books. bet is operating in, in West Virginia and they right. get 0.4 percent of the volume Correct. of bets and they offer they're they're offering stuff. Very similarly, they try to offer as much stuff as possible. And right. it's not necessarily because there's like, oh, if we do great marketing, if we offer the best prices, if we, we're going to gain some market share off of the leaders. A lot of their motivation is that we're showcasing something in order correct. to be acquired by someone else. Correct. And That's we correct. know that we're basically coming out with a toy sports sports. This is a toy sports book. And in order for us to have right. as much runway to exist as possible, our only defense against adverse selection is to, is to basically, right. I, dude, it's so easy to figure out how we fucked up all these numbers. Uh, if anyone finds out we fucked it up, we just say, got by, get out of here, get out of here, right. get out of here. Because they just want to exist long enough so that FanDuel buys them for sixty million dollars or whatever, or right. buys a part of their software. Or yeah, they, they they had so the question: Why are they? Well, maybe they built some piece of software. There's a bunch of component software components in these systems, and each software component, especially if you build it well, it has value, right? So, like, if 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 I'm a, in fact, I thought about this as a business. We didn't end up going this route, but. I mean, many times I was like, you know what? We've built this amazing 
odds making service, you know, and why don't why don't we just I mean, literally is that what would it take for us to launch, you know, as the thirteenth brand in some market, you know, kind of use you know, license other software, you know, license the platform software, license the software, license the software, get, you know, get approved in a, in a cheap state, you know, just so that we can, this was before we had, I think any customers even, I was like, I was like maybe the best route to market is just get our stuff out there in, in a cheap state and let people bet it, you know, kind of go from there. We didn't go that route that that route is complicated for other reasons and expensive, but, but yeah, exactly. That there's reasons that these companies do that, and 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 the thing is like, they want to have all the bet. So when we ta- talk about all the betting money, they want to have all the different sports. They want to have you know all the major American sports. They want to have soccer. They want to have cricket and darts and you know whatever all that stuff, right? And um, but the there's a technical problem that every again they buy all those lines from third party content service right so they buy those lines from companies like ours and there's different types of content providers so there's some that are kind of the big guys and they specialize in we call them breadth first content providers and if you go to g2e which was just in vegas last week you know and you go to all the booths and you pick up all the brochures you know their brochure will say we offer 700 trillion quadrillion events per year right that'll be that's their marketing they say we offer the most quantity of stuff is kind of their marketing pitch and so if you're a smaller sportsbook brand typically you have the bandwidth to integrate one of those and then that's it like you don't really have the flexibility to say okay but you have the best darts so we're going to integrate you for darts and then you have the best pickleball so we're going to integrate you for pickleball like that's the every time you integrate a new company a, it's expensive. You have to make new. You have to make a whole new contract. You have to, and it's more points of failure. It's more technical points of failure. It's more business points of failure. It's just it creates risk that's you know for the smaller brands it's not really tenable. So typically they have strong incentives to just kind of go with one big one that kind of fire hoses all the content and hope for the best. And 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 you know and that those services are good at some sports and less good at others just by that's how the world works right but un- understanding yep. the ecosystem yep. makes you better clued in on how the information asymmetry happens so like yes you would from a macro perspective would you would you call if you wanted to call sports betting a game Yep. Would you say that the main concept, the macro game of sports betting, is adverse selection? Is one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Is, 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 yes. is literally like that is the game. It's not, it's even more so than DFS, because DFS obviously information asymmetry exists. One person doesn't roster a guy that's obviously underpriced, and we get all the value from you know their lineups that don't play him. But like. Adverse selection works in both the buyer and the seller's favor. So, like, w- as we get into number two, and my the number two point is the difference between models and markets, that yep. treating adverse selection is different if it's a market versus if it's a model. So when I when I say about uh, adverse selection, the 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 classic expression of this I'm, I'm i'm sure you know the lemon problem right in economics i don't actually i you don't i mean the, i'm the definitely familiar with that adverse selection, selection but i haven't heard this uh right. this little parable uh, here. Uh, had a paper the market for lemons you you, okay. men- you mention it all the time trust me you know what it means. oh i'm sure yeah. i'm sure i understand the kind i just don't know about lemons right. that's all <laughs> no no because you you say it all the time uh, on the on the buyer and seller's end is like the lemon problem is that if you're buying a used car, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Lemon, that kind of lemon. That kind of lemon. No, I was right. thinking like I was gonna oh, okay. have, so have some lemonade. The, de- yeah, yeah, yeah. the dealer knows much more about the car yes. than you do. Mm-hmm. But the more the as the supply of cars go down, the more likely it is that the cars that are left are gonna be lemons. And that's Correct. the that concept applies differently to sports betting markets versus sports betting models. And I think this is very important why 
you hear a lot of stuff with sides and totals guys, like top down betters and sides and totals versus prop mark versus prop. I want to call them prop markets, but they're prop they're, they're, bets. They're prop markets. They're all, yeah. It's, it's, you right. Know. But there are, but there's a big difference between if you see a number that's off that you think we're going to say, think maybe you have a model, maybe you have a, maybe you just right. have an opinion, maybe out of the blue. It doesn't, yeah. It, the model inside your head of going, I think the Bears are going to win tomorrow is still a model. It's just a very, very exactly not an inaccurate one. Yeah, it's, it's uh, your vibe. If you, think yeah. that the, the, if you think that the Bears should be, you know, a certain price and you think it's off, the, the fact that it is a major liquid market, if the more likely it is that the number that you're looking at is a lemon because yes. it's still there, yet when it comes to lines that are not made necessarily much by markets, it's quite possible that the prop that you're looking at may not be a lemon necessarily because not enough people have seen it because there's no market. There could be almost no adverse selection there. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I want to highlight that difference because you talk about the models where you mentioned before that dude, like when you when you're betting on some of these props, right? When you're on prize picks an underdog, even a lot of times they're cop. A lot of times they're copying from the, the other sports books. A lot of times people are copying from everyone else. And oh, all yeah. you do, all it's a big game of telephone is what I, I say. Right. So it's, yeah. But what yeah. they're copying, what they're copying is like, it just one it could just be Joe. It, it's, it's Joe guy. It's just some projection model. Right. That everyone's just copying until until told otherwise, that number is going to stay there as long as the model says that that should be the number. And if certain books want to move their numbers because some of their profiled sharp players, you know, they're getting action on it, or we'll talk about releases that they're getting a signal because in 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 adverse selection there's signaling and screening that. The way that prop the prop lines move is different than the way that spreads and totals move, and if you're going to treat them the same, you get the that I mean closing line value for instance in major market spreads total stuff like that matters a lot more than in props because the closing line value it's not a it's like dude it's right not like like if you're betting into a market. So closing, right. I mean, I, I'm assuming your listeners know what closing line value is. If you're bet, yeah. Closing line value only is a concept worth thinking about in a market. That's basically, what does the market think about the bet you made? If there's no market, There's it's not a thing. There's no concept there, you know, right. Right, so, so models, so yeah. mo most of the time when you are betting props, you are primarily betting against a model. So if you you're, you're betting against and, someone somewhere, and the funny thing about this is that often the sports books or whatever you're betting, they actually they could not tell you for the life of them where that number actually came from. So like, here's what I mean by this. So like, you you were saying, you know, well, you know, if you go to underdog or prize fix or whatever, you know, any of these places, and you're betting on somebody's player prop, and you say, well, who who actually made that number in the first place? And if you check, like, literally no one could tell. And the reason, my example for this is, as I said, we had, we had this, this, you know, this, this, we had have this company that, that makes, uh, produces an odds feed. And um, I was generally, I was, my main job was developing the model. Um, so for the most part, I didn't actually trade games, but I did trade some just, um, just as an all hands on deck kind of thing. And I also traded some as a, I need to use my own models, some just to, be good at making them better basically um so i traded some games and it always amazed me like i'm sitting in this little tiny office in henderson nevada in basically vegas you know little no windows i chose that on purpose but my little windowless office in a strip mall in in henderson nevada and watching an nfl game and making in-play lines for our customers and I, I, there's one moment I remember very vividly where I think it was uh, Lamar Jackson went down with what looked like a high angle spring. And immediately, I mean, serious business as far as making a new line when the 
when your you know starting quarterback is injured and you're not quite sure how bad it is and you know whatever right so i'm on the the comms with matt and you know our team saying you know what do we think about this injury how bad does it look does it look like he's coming back does it look like you know what's the backup what you know, what would we rate the, the, you know, the Ravens offense, um, you know, with the backup, whatever. Right. So we're going through all this and we're trying to come up with what we want to make the new line. So we, we come up with our answer in the moment. And again, it's like, you know, I mean, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I can't, what do I know? He's rolling around on the ground. I'm just doing the best I can. I mean, same as anyone else. And uh, so we come up with our answer. We're like, we're going with this. So we, and I hit go. And then, like, 10 seconds, and it was a big change. I mean, it's a big change to the line, right? I was Our assumption was he was going to miss a lot of time in the game, and, and it was going to be a big deal. So we made a big line change, boom, published it. And then less than 10 seconds later, I had another major sports book, not a customer, in a completely different country, <laughs> like – had no business relationship with us whatsoever, boom, copied my line, right? And it's like, the P- I guarantee you, the people working at that company in a completely different country who used my line, they couldn't have told you, you could have said, Wait, where did that come from? And they couldn't have a million years told me, well, there's a guy named Ed Miller sitting in a little closet somewhere in Las Vegas, like zero shot. Like, they would have absolutely no idea where that number came from. They just, that's just the new number in the market. They talk about, you know, really it was, you know, Ed Miller in a broom closet. <laughs> so, so go. On, 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 that, and, on that topic, yeah. coming to the, the sports better side, on, on my yep. side of the counter, like, what, what prevents, I, I don't want to use the term prevent, but if I believe, if I have a model, Right, you yep. have a model, Ed. You're in a closet yep. in Henderson, Nevada. Yep. We're not even going to deal with in play. We're dealing with pregame. We're dealing. It's right. Monday night football. It's the Chargers versus the Cowboys. Okay. And on Friday, all of a sudden, these props show up: Pollard receiving yep. yards, and yep. and they got the the touchdown props, and then you got reception props, you got pass attempts, right. rush attempts, you got. Or how many field goals are going to be made, and all the all the type of stuff goes up, right? Yep. Initially, right? Yep. That that's coming. That's that's not the Adderall addicted nerds, as you would say. Nope. Correct. Go go bouncing. It's it's someone out. That is a that is a company like ours. I mean, our company also produces some of those markets. But like, if you see it at, you know, wherever you're talking about, it's probably not from our company. It's probably from a different company. And yeah, that's somebody at that company who has a model and maintains a model that produces that pricing based on the work they do. Now they're going to do some of the type of work that a a DFS player would do to make their numbers. They're going to make some estimate of usage or some estimate of snap count. Probably I would assume Um, they would, you know, they, they have some, some knobs they could turn. Right. And then they have, but Ed, but Ed, it's very similar. Mm-hmm. So like, if you've been playing yep. DFS, so I've been playing DFS for eight years. Yep. I can, I can model to some degree. I'm not very good at it, but I mean, I can right. do something. But the thing is, is that in the marketplace, like, either you're building your own model, like, like obviously yeah, but- I do shows every morning for Roto Grinders. How do you think we come up with? Of course, with exactly. Our, projection? our NBA, we have a, we have a channel. But like for NBA yep. projections, a lot of times NBA projections are very tied to minutes. So you basically yep. have yep. to project what do you think the coach is going to do and dole out the minutes and how they're going to play the rotations. Yep. And there's human beings that yep. have to input that stuff. That uh, yep. someone's out for a, the Jefferson's out for the Vikings, yep. and there's pretty much no data that has the Vikings playing without Jefferson in this big configuration. Yep. So our team at Roto Grinders has to go. You gotta guess. Well, like, you you guess. Gotta get a twenty six percent. Like it's it's yep. a. This you is guess. what we think to happen, and then we have to run these inputs through the model, which takes yep. in the weather, takes in yep. the totals, takes yep. in the rate of plays, and all that type of stuff, and then spits out numbers. Like 
all you're doing when you're betting on DraftKings, FanDuel, and insert sportsbook name. That's exactly what the company that makes the lines is doing. They're doing exactly right. the same thing. They're no, so there's so no as, reason to think they're any smarter than you guys at Roto Grinders or the guys at ETR or anyone else who does this independently. There's no reason to assume that the geniuses are there and the you Roto Grinders are a bunch of slugs. Like that's not how it works at all. Right. So if yeah. I if I took if I took my projections or Roto Grinders projections, correct, and just said, okay, I'm going to compare our projections at Roto Grinders right. versus the prop lines which is kind of part of what I do and just go, what, what should, based on our projections, what should the prices of all these things be? And then right. find the ones that are off and go bang, 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 bang. Right. And if my, now, if now implicit if, if is, model, in that is, is you're, model, sort of, you're sort of assuming Roto Grinders does better work on average than the, the company that makes the props, which entirely could be true. But me as an outsider, cause I don't, I don't, you know, if you just said, Hey, Ed, you know, come decide if you want to bet this or not. I would, I would look at the work. I would look at the work there. I would, right. I would interview the road. I would say, what did you do? How do you make these numbers? What's your process like? Right. You know, I look about, at the... Ed, Ed, I'm talking about theoretically. I like the yeah, whole exactly. Not, right. Just yeah, yeah. Theoretically, if you have a model that says X, you're essentially betting against a model that says Y. You're and many get someone else's model, and they right. get the benefit of the doubt because they put a hold on the market. And, but you get to pick and choose, right? So it's right. like the Solomon problem, right? It's like it's like you get to cut the cake, but I get to pick the slice, right? So right. that's that's how it works. Yep. So in so in general, I mean the in the prop markets at least, say for SGPs, if you could measure correlation better, like it's it's not a matter of I I I think this the market will move this type. Now like, now now theoretically, the company that makes the 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 prop pricing should be getting the bet information as it comes should be kind of maintaining a market now that's certainly what we did at huddle like if you bet into our lines at huddle like a we have software that automatically reacts to it sometimes you know based on certain people and certain types of bets and b we have employees we have traders whose job it is to review the betting action and decide if they think there's signal there right they think you know their job is to say hey is, do i think this bet is just some yahoo shoving a parlay in or is this bet somebody who's trying to beat us it's someone who's trying to beat us well we change our model substance now the thing that i would say is true about these sports betting content companies is their reaction to that sort of betting information or market information is spotty i would say some of them some of them incorporate it because you have to it, that doesn't happen automatically you don't just automatically update your model accurately with the the feedback you get. You have to do the math, and you have to like you have to create that feedback loop in your system. And and some people do that better than others, for sure. Yeah. But inside inside of the prop the prop market, yep. I don't want to call them markets, but the prop menu and yep. the ecosystem of props. Yep. There is a mark like there is a market. Like let let's talk about this a little because I'm yeah. I'm mentioning stuff about my my big thing in DFS is that you that the publicly available although most of it is you have to it's behind a paywall like you could you could play DFS just play DFS better than the average schmucks that make up a lot of the contests by like just subscribing just getting a good projection model and just playing the game well in the prop based sports betting market. The information, would you say that this sentence is true? The okay. Inform the information that you're getting from a source that's not originated by you yourself. Correct. Right? Because if you originate it, you're the only one with that information. So right. the information is only as valuable to as many people that uh, are direct, inversely proportionally valuable to the amount of people that are also using it and the time horizon in which the information was released. Yes. I, if I understand what you said, I, I agree with that for sure. Okay. So, so yeah. in, in practice, that would mean, let's say for instance, we talk about releases like establish the run ETR. Yep. They have an NBA yep. projections team like yep. Mike Gallagher. They got Drew Dinkmeyer and everything. Yep. And they yep. know the they NBA well. Very they good people the there. Well. They're very yep. good people. Yep. So 
what they'll do in the morning is assess the injury report. They'll they'll assess all this type of stuff. And by like one or two o'clock in the afternoon, they'll be like, okay, we have to obviously come out with our projections for DFS, right? Because people want to build their DFS lineups, you know, using yep. our projections. But they also have statistical projections on rebounds and all, all these means and medians yep. of yep. all these stats. So they will look, they'll either release the projections or they will look themselves and go, what are the, based on, we're going to compare our model to the sportsbooks models. Correct. And go, is there stuff that's enough of an edge that we would suggest you bet on it based on our model and right. they will do one of, they will do both things. They will say, okay, it's two o'clock. Here's all the statistical projections. So someone like me could grab right. the CSV go into Excel and compare everything and start banging out stuff if I want. Yep. But they also will say, here's the top five. If you right. don't want to do that work, we're going to, we're going to give our members, you know, early access to here's the top yep. five. And those, yep. those people, those couple hundred people may go directly to a sports book and start banging out $20, Correct. $30. When, when some trader on the other side sees this, they're going to, they, they're going to assume because, like in point number one, the ecosystem is held together by duct tape. That is right. more likely than not that they're in that type of, it's not a sides and totals market. It's a prop market that right. we need to protect ourselves. Maybe our model is off. So we're going to, instead of, yes, his number was 12 and a half points, but everyone's betting this $20 on this over. We're going to now move it to 14 and a half and wait for this, wait for it to stop. Right. So, so, so the thing I would, the sort of nuance I would add to that is there's a sports book employee and then there's a, there's two companies involved, right? There's the sports book and the sports book is the one that's taking the bets. And then there's the content creation company, which is a completely separate entity in this case, let's say, right? So it's a completely separate company whose job is to create the pricing and spam it out. Right, so you got a company whose job is to create the prices and spam it out, and then you've got the sports book that actually takes the bets. There's traders that work at both companies. Okay, so the trader at this, the other thing is that for the most part, the sports book software is not designed for heavy trading. Okay, the sports book software is designed to take in fire hose of content and push it through. Does that make sense? The software is right. Like the software is not designed to be fiddling with lines in, in a in an intelligent, uh, aggressive like like uh, it's you know this is not Nasdaq software. Does that make sense? It's not designed for quick market updates. This is designed for data comes. This is like YouTube, right? It's designed to show you stuff that's coming from elsewhere. So the, the, the point is that the trader at the sports book may not really have an easy way to actually trade. I mean, th these bets are coming in fast, right? Like the trader at the sports book may not have an easy way to come to a good line. Like th th they probably doesn't. They probably don't. Like if a bunch of people start betting such and such over whatever points, they're like, oh, it must be a release. But there's not much they could do about it. They might say, okay, well, let's move it to 15, but they don't know if 15 is the right number or 15 and a half or 16. It's not really the point. It's not really their job, right, in, in the way this works. So their job is to then basically forward that information back to the content creation company and say, hey, content creation company, we took this bet. Well, the content creation company, it's entirely possible they could go, we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you know, and I don't want to name names here, and you know, but like some of the content companies basically take that information and throw it right in the garbage. I'm going to tell you, that's what they do with it. Like that's for practical purposes. Maybe I'm stepping on some toes by saying that. Maybe I'm exaggerating by saying that. But a lot of that betting information functionally gets thrown out by by actual companies. That and again, our company, we tried very hard to 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 not do that in any way. Like we tried to use all of the betting information that came in our way as efficiently as possible. But that is, you don't have to do that. You can <laughs> more or less throw it out if you want. And uh, yeah, and some do, right? That's so, so, so the point I wanted to make there was you don't quite know how much adverse selection there is. Like, let's say, let's say ETR releases something 
let I, and again let's let's just take on faith that whatever ETR's recommendations are going to are they're going to win against whatever sports books tend to have today because I think that's probably true I think they're probably doing better stuff on average right so they come up with five releases you get the release you know within five seconds of the release you jam in a bet well your bet's probably good right well let's say they've had two minutes to react to the release maybe they move the line a little bit is it still bet still good i don't know but it really depends the answer there depends how efficiently does that system incorporate this betting information that's coming its way and and my point is that that can vary a lot you know, based on exactly which specific companies are providing the content and exactly which specific sports book you're betting into, because because they're they're that's just going to vary. And 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 that there's no way you can figure that out without trial and error. There's just you just have to you just have to say, how about this? How about this market? This this NBA market at this sports book? You can do some research. You can find out which content companies provide i mean this is not secret right this is it's also not it's neither advertised nor secret right so whatever com company supplies the basketball props to you know beaver bet right that information is knowable you can ask on twitter you could say hey who does the basketball props for beaver bet and then someone will say i don't know and you'll get a bunch of gar garbage but somebody somewhere will know the answer to that and you know and then you could kind of map out how the industry looks behind the scenes and then you can say okay well when i bet basketball props into beaver bet i don't really see the lines move that's because the, the market information isn't being efficiently it's not being efficiently getting back to you know whatever content company they're not using it whatever who knows and 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 then that's now information you understand about how the whole industry works so then so then if you think you know let's say content company x is you know basketball props are us or whatever you know is 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 you find out they're the company that does the props and now now you find out they're also doing baseball props for bet beaver well maybe you say well they didn't do a good job with the basketball props i bet at the beaver bet maybe they're gonna also screw up the baseball props at beaver bet right so so it once you understand kind of how the industry works behind the scenes you can kind of make those inferences about what's how things are likely to be behave in other areas but the com the common perception yep. which at like i said i mean you said you said it very well that this varies but the common perception like we'll say with the the stock market like the financial right. world especially in the major the major companies or stuff like that is like any information is already priced in. You'll see that inside. They, the no, 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 right? no. Definitely not. Right, right. <laughs> but, but, but I just want to highlight. It's like, because yeah. we'll, you'll see the average person, think of it, the average better that's betting on sides and totals. They'll look and they'll go, go the on, on Sunday morning, right? And they'll go, wow, it's, it's windy and wet in Chicago. Right. Uh, I'm going to bet the under 43 and a half. Right. And they don't realize that everyone's known it's going to be, windy and rainy in chicago yes. since last yes. week and it opened Correct. at 46 and it's now like that yes. that rain is already priced into the people number. are betting the weather all throughout the week exactly right at right. the market making but, sports books yes but yes. in the prop markets i'm not sorry, talking about the wind and the rain the prop Correct. markets may or may not it could vary on the effect of how information flows so my Correct. my the point that I want and the to quality make, of the work that the originating company does full stop that's right yep so let's yep. say let's say for instance let's say we're gonna use a hypothetical example pick let's you'll use pickleball and we'll pretend pickleball it is a right uh we have maybe here at roto at roto grinders where where I, I do my shows we got a guy loves pick loves Bulgarian pickleball right. <laughs> right. All of yep. Bulgarian pickleball, all he wants, and we decide, even though not like many of our subscribers don't care about Bulgarian pickleball, that as part of our premium membership, we put out Bulgarian pickleball. Yep, statistical projections. Why and, not? And anyone, any right? If you log in and you want to pay us per month, you get the baseball stuff, you get the basketball, you get all that, but you also get this Bulgarian pickleball thing. <laughs> exactly. Like. Right. Yes. And it's available to thousands of people that 
log in and if they select it on our menu on Roto Grinders, they could go look at the pickleball fucking projection. <laughs> exactly. Uh, if no one actually uses those pickleball projections, this fact that it is publicly available, even for a fee, but it's public, doesn't mean yep. that information is is propagated. So, like, yeah. if I wanted to bet on Bulgarian pickleball, like, if if I knew, it, there would be a big difference. Would you say that on average, I know that situations vary, that if I, Bulgarian pickleball, if I bet on Bulgarian pickleball using the, the Roto-Grinders Bulgarian pickleball projections, and the Roto-Grinders model is significantly better than the whatever cockamamie model that right. this book has, that, and they allow me to bet, that I'm going to make more money betting myself than if a thousand Roto-Grinders subscribers also did it, unless you got got it in as early as possible. Like, you're much more yeah, likely for, that if a thousand right. people are using what's publicly available, that the information as time goes by is going to get more and more, even in the pro... Well, at, because, at point, right, because they're, they're, they're forcing people to pay attention, right? Like, right. if you get... Right, like, if you... If you're a sports book, right, it, people don't understand how vulnerable these sports books are. I mean, there's a reason they're so defensive because it's, it's the power of compounding interest, right? Like, it's like, it's like you can start with $10. Like, so if you open any modern sports book menu today and there's, you know, 10 bazillion bets they offer you, well, some percentage of those, which is like, I don't know, it's five. 500 bets offered. I'm just pulling numbers out of my ass right now. But let's say 500 bets on the menu are good bets for you. Like they're plus EV bets and they're only there. You just have to find them. Right. And uh, if the, if the sports book just left it and said, Hey, $10 better, you could just go nuts, bet on our menu. Well, as soon as you got that skill to bet all the stuff, you could $10, you'd, grind it up to 15 you grind it up to and then you'd increase your bet size and you grind it up to 30 and then you grind it up to 60 and 120 and stuff doubles and then it, i mean it's exponential math right and and the problem is that if if a thousand people are doing that the the so what might be a blip today in three months could be a huge hit to the bottom line they don't do anything about it so you're forcing them to do something about it when you have a thousand people betting it. That's that's the difference, really. You're you're taking something that otherwise they could ignore. They could just throw up on their menu and just I mean, people bet it, nobody bets it, who cares? And as soon as a thousand people start betting it, now they have to care. You're forcing them to care about the fact that this this exists. And that's why it that's why it moves. And that's that's, why, that's it why I said it that it's yeah. inverse like whenever yes. you're looking at information, it's yes. inverse like it's inversely Yes. Proportionally valuable to you. The the less people that know it, Correct. assuming, yeah, assuming yeah. it's good. Obviously, if it's bad, it doesn't matter. They don't care. Right. If Correct. it's good, it's the less people that are looking at it means it's more likely to be valuable. And the earlier that you've looked at it, the more likely it's to be valuable. And as those things yes. go out, like like if for instance, that ETR example, there's a big difference between uh ETR coming out with NBA, their their NBA pick release, which is like the best five out of their model or something like right. that. And if you're looking at their statistical projections at 645 Eastern, like the value of like the top half of that is probably gone at that point. But an hour before, only 40% of it is gone. Only right. 30% of it is yep, gone. Like, yep, yep. This is the right, end, this is the right maybe idea. There, maybe yep. there's still some 3% edges still there because let more people have paid attention to the right. top part and not to the bottom. So maybe you're able to still pick off some things, shave some things on the bottom. I think that's very important because there's some Ed, I do shows every day. You, I mean, you don't realize how many, how many, and I, you know, listen to shows. Yeah. You know, there are tons of people. Oh, you know, I know it's six o'clock. It's, it's, it's Sunday morning. It's Sunday morning for NFL. DFS and we do a whole shows at Roto Grinders and people will ask me or people will ask our hosts like what 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 prop bets do you like what prop bets do you like and I go uh you should ask me on Wednesday like 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 on Wednesday I have a whole bunch of stuff on Thursday right. 
I have a little bit less stuff on Friday. Yeah. There's still some stuff, but Sunday morning, like right. most likely nothing's, right. nothing's worth me telling you about. Right. And that's, you have to understand how that, if, like if, if it's a game of adverse selection, a game of information asymmetry, yep. people may be listening to this show going, why do we care how these sports books operate and the duct tape right. and the bureaucracy? It's like, well, as you get more experience betting into certain markets, you'll start to understand more on like a question that even like I'm in the unabated discord for the sides and total stuff, especially there's a lot of questions of, and I didn't get it beforehand until your book, because I'm mostly props and it doesn't necessarily work this way. People yeah. ask, uh, I'm betting on this and some book I've never heard of on, and then go who provides their odds for this sport. And I go, why does that matter? And I go, after reading your interception book, I go, oh, I they need they need to track how the information works and what times yeah. the things will change yeah. so they could get on the best side of the line. I'm like, yeah, oh, that's why knowing how the ecosystem works, yeah. even in props. Oh yeah, you, know, you I need to know like like even yeah. even if even if you think let's say you think ETRs model sucks let's say you're just like i built my own you're you're an adderall addicted nerd you pull up your glasses and go yeah i built my own basketball model and uh i compared it to to etrs and mine as an r squared of blah 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 and i the, and some of their stuff is complete garbage uh you know what would be very valuable to you getting their stuff and then when they and not betting your edge if it's on the other side of a release that etr right. is going to make because it's quite possible that if you wait an hour that the sports books to play defense, start moving the number or the content company moves the number. And then you take a better value on the other yep. side, right? Yep. Like, like there's a value yep. to that. There's also 100%. a value to, I know, I know when a release hat, like for instance, I mean, I'm just going to share. I mean, I share a lot of what I do. I incorporate a lot of Derek Cardi's the blitz into my NFL DFS process. Yep. He comes out with statistical projections, but like he he himself does not go on an actual show until Thursday. But Wednesday night, his projections come out. So, like, I just I'm I'm looking at his, I'm looking on Wednesday before on Thursday morning when he's like, yeah, based on the blitz projections, here are these three things that I think stick out the most. It's like it's always three things that I got. 18 hours ago because because right 95 percent of the public that are, that is that knows about Derek Hardy's blitz projections is just waiting for some show right and I'm like I'm gonna yeah, download yeah. to see it I'm gonna, right I'm gonna of course you're not gonna wait that. right exactly right I'm not gonna wait right now if too many people did that then they'd be valuing like waiting by exactly and this is this is this is the entire this is the entire game this is why the more you understand about how all this works, the better you're going to be at executing the game. You have to know who's on the other side of your bet. Where did this number come from? You know, why is it here? You have to know, oh, it moved because Derek Carney released this and his show comes on that. You have to know all this <laughs> Like, you do. Like, like you you will, you will, you, like, this, I mean, yes, this is what sports, this is what sports stuff is. Sports stuff is knowing this. It's not I'm for the most part. I mean, there's a little bit, but it's for the most part not. Oh, I watched the game and I saw that such and such was throwing this way today or that. I mean, for the most part, it's like it's this stuff that really moves the needle as far as it's both. But it's it's it's. I would say this is the this is the baseline. Like I I I think everybody who's successful more or less has some grounding in this type of thing of the right. mechanics well, let, let, of how the, the third stuff thing works. and you kind yeah. of highlighted it. Also, I put the third uh, out point, the three major points that I got out of this book. Yeah. One, sports betting ecosystem held together by duct tape. Okay. Yes. Number two, that you need to know the difference between markets and models. Okay. We yes. covered that. Number three, which is very similar in poker as well, to some extent. Yep. Sports betting is still a people business. Yes. There is still like... You are not betting against some AI supercomputer robot that like it's just a black box and and 
And Jason Robbins at DraftKings just has this black box and it just runs. And right. there, there, there's no, like, there are people on the other side of the screen yeah. that are looking at your behavior in some regards, whether they're yeah. paying attention to you closely or not. Attend, there, there's stuff going on a screen. And in the same regard of the bureaucracy, understanding the motivations of the people involved in what, how this ecosystem puts together, it's, uh, I call it in, in, a, in a lot of jobs. And I talk to my wife a lot about this, about like middle management, about right. CYA, like yep. she's on the front line in her job. And she a lot of times doesn't understand why her management who aren't on the front lines are asking them to do X, Y, Z. And like, but that isn't the best way to do it. It's like, yeah, but right. it's the best way for them to cover their ass. So yes. they're motivated by their their bosses who are motivated by their bosses. So the guys on the front line really know what the hell's going on, but they're not incentivized to do what's best for business. They're doing what's incentivized to what keeps their boss off their back yep. or getting a good performance review. So <laughs> when you're betting on anything, you're clicking a button on an app or anything like that, your some screen <clears throat> is showing your bet to some human being, and yes. that uh, if the because uh, of adverse selection, everyone knows in the ecosystem, especially on the sports books end, that playing defense on seventeen thousand markets on these betting menus is impossible. Correct. Right. So this is the yep. reason why they're much more likely, instead of to correct their lines, to just limit you to pennies, get rid right. of you, get, like you're a gnat. So whenever you're you're embracing this game and how the information asymmetry moves through the market, uh, think every time you press the button, think of what does the guy on the other side, the girl or whoever on the other side, yeah, if they were just paying attention to me, yes, what would they think when I made this bet? Yep. And the more you think about that, how would you feel if you were in their spot and Giannis and Tanta Bacupo was just ruled out for the Milwaukee Bucks, right? Just yep. literally, you got a notification on Twitter that Giannis is out and you, you go right over to the FanDuel Sportsbook and you take Drew Holiday. I mean, I know he's not on the team anymore, but whatever. We'll use the example. Like LeBron is out and you take ADs over over nine and a half rebounds because you know that yep. that's going to go up to like 12 and a half. There's a person on the other side of the screen that it's their job to also look and see that Giannis is out and pull yes. the lines as quickly as possible because they know all these props are fucking off by a lot. Right. And in the pro in the middle of them going from their finger to the keyboard there's some fucking douchebag. And, and, and all of them are, and, and, and to be clear, all of the props are off. Some to a larger degree than others. And there's no button. There's no Giannis is out button. They can just press the button that fixes it. That's not, that's not a thing. You know, so that all these, so that all they know is everything's borked at that moment. And there's no easy way to fix it. And put yourself in that person's shoes. Typically, they take the line, but the point is, is not yeah, they know might take the line. They react, but, then, but, but the, what is their boss going to be mad at if they take the line down? You're not up. <laughs> You're not available. Where's the availability? You know, and 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 again, understanding that that's the the focus. Like, why didn't you have a line up? Why wasn't it up? It's like, okay, it's up. It's terrible. You just got ruled out. <laughs> you know, what, it's, what, what, yeah. what is a human being most likely to do? So, for instance. I'm using that as an example. You use some of these examples yep. in the book, right? right? And I'm not saying not to do this. I'm not saying to do this. Right. But just to highlight that you're not playing against a computer. You're playing against Correct. a human being. That, yep. for instance, like if you see that you go on unabated, right? There's an odd screen there, right? right. Circa tends to have sharper lines. Pinnacle, off, these offshore books, right? And you follow the market and you know that when Pinnacle moves their line, when Bookmaker moves their line, that that's going to get copied through the ecosystem in well, that's for sure, seconds. yeah, for right. sure, yeah. And there's something you don't even know what it is because you're just doing a top-down approach. You're just steam chasing, right? And 
you see that the, the the over under on a college football game is 60 and a half. And then at the at a market making book, you see 56 and a half. And you go, I'm rushing to click on FanDuel Sportsbook right. to go under 60 and a half because it moved four points for you don't even know what the reason is, right. but you know that it had to be for some reason. And you go, Well, there's a trader on the other side that's it's not like they don't see that. They, they're going to see the information come through also. Correct. And if you're Correct. constantly the guy that they have to review a $5,000 bet because that's going to go to a trader review every time. Yeah, I mean, you're just oh, saying, that's a non-starter. Line. That's a non, yeah, that's just, you, your angle is too obvious and you're trying to make too much off of it. That is it's just not a thing. You're not going to get your bets through and but, but, they're just going to stay go away. I think it's, it's more important to understand the people side of it Yes. I think a lot of people they they think in terms of oh some computer ag- algorithm right Correct. figured me out and your claim in the book and from your experience is that a lot of times this isn't necessary now if they put you in review they may go through some programming and stuff and right. but, and see what your behavior is but a lot of times like these obvious things if you get too greedy you just all you're doing yeah, becoming a these, new these are people and making these decisions that they don't want to. Yeah, these are people that are saying, "I we don't want this person's action," for sure. Right. Yep. Right. So, yep. so that's, so that's why, I want to highlight the best sentence in your entire book. That I okay. It. I'm, I'm, right? I'm ready. The best, the best sentence by far. And remember, I come from. Remember, we framed this conversation from, like, we talk about these l- limiting betters, and you know, uh type of thing like yeah. that disconnect that we talked about framing from the beginning that this is mostly for player props this is mostly for people that can you make 25,000 off can you can you start with a $10,000 bankroll and by the end of the year have $30,000 betting on 100% props? you can yes. right right 100%. this is not for uh yeah. th- i'm going to take advantage of an angle and put several dimes and growth and you know and, and then you have right. to get new accounts because those get banned. Like, this is not yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not that. So the thing that this ends, because it goes along with exactly, I mean, it's so it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Okay. Can't it's wait. On, it's on, I don't know what page it's on. <laughs> and it goes along with number three. And it goes along with number two. And it goes along with number one. And it fits everything. It's possible that being able to find an endless supply of break-even yeah. bets may be the most valuable sports betting skill of all. That is the yep. best sentence in the entire book. And you know I'm exactly glad you think so, because I, I thought that was going to be an aha moment for a lot of people. Yeah. Because it, because it, it aligns very like much with... It's, it aligns very much with how I approach props. Yeah. so much so like my attitude is uh i don't want to use use uh uh steve bannon you know as as a as a okay as an analogy but what is he known for flooding the zone full of shit yes so like my attitude is is that uh i'm gonna take i'm gonna take a model right with a whole bunch of bunch bunch of edges i'm not gonna necessarily discern on like, I'm not going to stick to Kelly, right? I'm not going to bet like $500 on one and $10 on another. Correct. I'm going to kind of yep. scale in the middle and go, college football this past, remember, legal books have only been open to me for three weeks, okay? I've, I've been doing right. I've been doing price picks and underdog before, but the variance is going to be obviously higher because you have to get like five right at a time in order to profit yeah. off of it. Uh, on college football, I know nothing about college football, Ed. I don't know. I don't follow. I don't, nothing, nothing right. whatsoever. Right. All I know is that that our college football prop, our college football projections at Roto Grinders are pretty damn good, right? So I get them early, right? Before they're even, because I have administrative access, so like I get them before they're posted in lineup HQ, right. and uh, I just go through. I I load them into Excel, and uh, this past Saturday I made two hundred and forty college football prop bets, and they're all for like twenty or thirty dollars a piece. Right. Just anything that had value. If it had this much value, yeah, twenty bucks. If it had this much value, twenty bucks, thirty bucks. Right. Like the whole way. I did very, I did very well this past 
Saturday in college football props. Right. Uh, I, to to the other side of the on the other side of the aisle, I just look like like just the degenerate that. Well, well the thing is, football. the thing is, your well, the most the most degenerate quote unquote bet are the ones that are the major markets because the sports books do know that those college they know that they again they're getting those college football props from a content provider. They right. know that they're, they're not getting them from a market. Yeah, but I do this in the, but Ed, I do this in the baseball. I do this in foot football right. on Sunday. I had 180 different. I think NFL. I think NFL. I, I think NFL is a great target for all this stuff because NFL is the biggest sport in this country, right? NFL is that's exactly what they want you betting is NFL, right? You name it: in play NFL, single game parlay NFL, player prop NFL. You know NFL, NFL, NFL. That's what they want you betting. This is I I I I mean if you just spam NFL but and and the, the, there's plenty of great stuff to bet in NFL like a, a, anyone who's like ah NFL is the big sport there's nothing good no nope 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 not right at all the only thing the only thing that's solid are the market made prices the 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 main point spread no you are not beating a main NFL point spread on Sunday morning full stop you're just not you know a main total you're not but an alternate total, an alternate point spread, a first quarter total, a prop on field goals, a player prop, any player prop, uh, any in-play line potentially, uh, but especially in-play line, we kind of pointed out the times of games where the in-play models tend to really wonk out, <laughs> which is tends to be kind of through the second quarter um, and then most of the second half, really. Um but but, uh, but Ed, people think people think, yeah. They they come they come. To, I see people talk and they come to me and they think, okay, they're going to specialize. They they want to bet props. They they they're not right. going to do sides and totals. They're going to take advantage of these betting menus and then they think in terms. And I think you mentioned some uh, mentioned this a little bit in the book that, like, so someone will come to me and go, oh, I want to bet props like you like 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 you know you 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 bet props. I go and they'll and their their first reaction is like. What are, what are, what are the, what are, uh, it'll be Thursday morning, Wednesday, right? Yeah. Or NFL. And it'd be like, uh, based on, based on your projections, what are the, what, what, what are, what are three props right. that I should bet? And I, and, and then they they want to go and they go want to go on DraftKings or a major sports book or something, or even a, the smaller ones, you're not going to have a, you can have a big problem with. Right. Uh, and bet $500 on each of those three. And right. I'm like, that's not how I bet. This is exactly this is exact, this is how they pick people off because right. this is everybody's everybody's uh, this is a extremely this is the rule, right? This is the rule about how people are trying to win, how they behave. Is they want they don't want to they don't want variance, they don't want a, any gamble, they want only the biggest edges and they want to jam it in. That's what they want. They they don't want to they want to lock it in. They want to they want to jam in the big edge and then they want to like cash out as soon as it gives them the, the the locked in win right and it's it's like you know you do that and i mean it's just obvious what you're doing it's just dead obvious what you're doing and that's what they don't want so yeah no i so i like your strategy so i i obviously i love your strategy about spamming bets uh i would be a little worried that the sports could be like well we know our college football props are i would just i mean i would just spam absolutely as much as you can if i were you i would but, but i would the, the, spam the, the yeah is that in addition to this so, for instance, on on uh, on on my my stream, uh, yep. I think yesterday, yesterday. So I do it. I do a stream, and I just live. I pretty much okay. Let's take a. I'm I'm teaching the same concept. So just like right. let's take a look at what's available. Here's this, and here's that, and that looks good. And we have this this little two thousand dollar bankroll that we started with, and we're betting real money. Uh, yep. We uh, I I looked and I saw an inefficiency. In like a very low, like I I look for the lowest synthetic hold markets, and synthetic right. hold is a concept from Logic of sports betting. From Logic, yeah. And yeah. Uh, Caesars typically has shit lines. Like typically okay. they build no comment. A lot of <laughs> I don't have any I, opinion on saying, that. I'm just saying I'm I'm not I'm talking about shit as far as they it's insane. Like you're not you're rarely going to get the best number in a lot of markets at Caesars. Okay. Sometimes you can, and those are few, and you, you'll find them. But for most of the time, you're not. So, like, uh, in so the amount of action I give to Caesar is very similar. Like in poker, when you play private games in poker, like this is a, a good way of putting it in poker. 
when you play private games, because I come from New York City and I played in private games. Yep, yep. Uh, people aren't going to invite you back if you're the nit at the table, Correct. right? Yes. But I am a nit, but I am a nit. The thing <laughs> exactly. is that, that you, in order to, it, it, this quote is, is normal. Any poker player knows it. You got to give action to get action. Yes. Yeah. So if you exhibit behaviors where you're at least giving action to get action, I, 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 in the past three weeks, I've been, I've used every, every boost, every promo. There's an SG. Oh, you get a 33% SGP boost here. And I look at their SGP lines and they're like 20%. Like, like they're, they're, I, if I were going to do this SGP, I should do it at FanDuel, not at your book. Right, but right, since right. you're giving me a $33 boost, I'll put together, I'll find the game that I have three props in that I think are plus EV. Right. And I'll pair them together and here's 10 bucks because you now know that I've cashed in my, because if I was a normal person, I'd be like, sure, obviously, let me, let me bet on this boost because right. whatever, yes. they did, like yesterday, Bryce Harper, they gave an odds boost from plus 450 to plus 650 on a home run, $25 max. And I'm like, okay, give it to me. And I'm like, did I? Did you look at another book that like, yeah, that's going to be slightly better than, but all these home run markets and they're one way markets and they're heavily fucking juiced. The boost probably makes me break even. It pro probably yeah. it gets me to the break even point. Yes. And you know, what's great about that. I could still use the boost. And to them, it's like, why wouldn't this player want to use the fucking boost? Right. You're, you're doing, you're doing a behavior. You're asking yourself, what does the sports book want me to do? Clearly they want you to bet a boost. I agree. For sure. Like there's no you're behaving like their model customer and the and the more you can behave like the customers they want and the less you behave like the weirdos that are trying to take their right. money. The, only, the, the better. Only semi yeah. weird thing that I'm doing that's probably not very recreational is that you know, oh he has uh you know he has twenty two bets and there's like there's like four on this NHL game for props. There's but I also Ed I also bet sides and totals because if I see all Ed, all I care about is what's the hold in the market and right. what, and is the, it, maybe I'm chasing a little bit of steam, but I'm not chasing steam. That's going to be like, right. like gonna, a CLD report is going to come out and it shows this guy's getting four or five points on every total of, from college right. football. I just look at it. I just, I'll wake up in the morning and maybe two or three times a day. Look, let me find the lowest synthetic hold markets. Is there something that is enough value that make it kind of break even or maybe maybe slightly negative EV, maybe yeah. slightly higher EV? And I'm already putting in, I know that weekend for college football, this book is going to get like 76 of my props. Uh, right. Why don't I throw in five of these? Uh, I'll bet 20 bucks on the Hawaii over. I don't know what the, right. according to this, but I'll, I'll throw that in also. And then yeah. if I have an SGP, if they gave me, an, they gave me a parlay, a four leg parlay boost. For fifty percent, up to twenty five dollars. So you know what I do? I go look uh, what prop is goes along with all the bets, then, and then just okay. I'm all I'm doing is increasing variance now because I'm yeah. I'm betting on those four things anyway. So now it just becomes like a prize picks underdog type of card where it's like, right. well, all four of them, we might just get extra money. But it would look so much doesn't look it looks weird where someone's like, here's a bonus bets. The optimal right. way to play bonus bets is by betting on long shots. But you know how right. fucking not, not recreational that looks? Right. If exactly. I went into FanDuel and said, give me $1,000 on plus 550 college football division two game. Right, like, right. So I'm using, I on FanDuel, they give you a bank. So you know what I use? I Anytime I find a prop that's like plus 150, plus 175, like I'm not going to minus 300s. Fuck you. I'm giving up too much EV. Right. right. But I'm just going to like. If it's an underdog, if, instead of putting the thirty bucks from my regular balance, I put it from the bonus balance. Right? right. Am I am I maximizing? No, but I'm right. like, I, I care more about uh, can I make this amount of money over a long period of time every month? Maybe get slightly more than like smash and grab. Like, oh, yeah. this line's off by four points. Let me put what's the max? Let me put eleven hundred dollars. Right. And I just I just feel from at least my experience, you know, three weeks worth of experience, but same for prize picks and underdog. Like I know plenty of people that are, they look at and they go, How how are you getting how are you getting these your money down on prize picks? Like they've already they've already 
Like I could put a hundred bucks and how are you getting this? It's like, yeah, I do uh, on an NFL when, when I was doing NFL and prize picks, it's like, yeah, I did a, uh, I did 90 cards of five picks for all for $10 each. And they have all yeah. different combinations and everything like that. Some are correlated. Some are not correlated, right? They, yeah. they ended up finding out about that. They, their correlation problem, you know, they weren't pricing that in enough. Right. I'm not going to just go. Yeah. I know your correlation engine is fucking, you didn't factor this in. Here's a $500 five pick with the pass, with two pass catchers and their right. card. Like, like I didn't yeah. do that. And like, right. well, why didn't you do that? That would maximize your EV. It's like, yeah, that's the reason why I could, I could still. Yes. Right. I could still get down on price well, fix and you can. Yep. Yeah, I try not to comment that's too. I mean, I, you know, I, I, right. I a hundred percent. And I, I mean, I just, uh, you know, I know that, I mean, this is a hundred percent the right idea. Like that, that, the the people who, who try to win all tend to kind of fall in the same pattern to the point where when you're looking at it from the other side, it's just obvious what they're doing. Right. It's just, the, the, you know, you just look at it and you're like, yeah, I know what this is, you know? And, and yeah. yeah and then you whatever people, you're, but, but Ed, but Ed, you see people promote like, like if you if you taught like top down betting, it's like okay, wait for the line moves and chase steam. And I'm not saying you can't do that. I don't think though the things that you point out, and you point out a lot of those of like these are behaviors that like the sports books know. Like everything in your book, the sports books already know. It's a matter of of how much of annoyance are you going to be. And I think there's like even if someone looked at like six months down the road, if someone looked at my account and said, "Yeah, this guy's probably." This guy's probably a sharp editor. The perfect example is you want them to look at the account and then go, this guy must be lucky, right? That's, yes. That's what you want. Exactly. There, there's, there's a, I, yeah. I mean, there's one example I know in particular where, where there's a guy, there's a guy who's well known to have made a lot of money betting sports. And uh, so, so someone who booked his action, uh, was talking to some people at our company and he said, yeah, I knew he was winning, but I couldn't figure out why. So I just let him bet. <laughs> and he just like, after a while, he's like, yeah, I, I cut it. And, and I kind of know what the angle was like, and, but his whole, the better I'm talking about was like, his whole strategy was hide the signal in this mountain of noise. And he just, it was, and the noise was betting noise. And it was also, he ran his mouth, you know, he would say, ah, oh, I'm the guy, you know, he would kind of spew, you know, misdirection with his mouth too. And, and make it sound like his angle was this or that. And, you know, and people bite on that sometimes too. But yeah, anyway, you know, I mean, and it's, it's, it, if you just build this kind of, I, for lack of a term, better reputation is somebody who just kind of spams bets and you're lucky and you're smart. You're not an idiot, but like, you know, I, you tend to. And again, these are corporate entities. Some of them may or may not have as much tolerance for that. And, and it's just your mileage may vary. But, you know, but yeah, that's 100 percent the right idea is, is if you want longevity at all, is just the more just random your behavior looks especially if you tend to have you know again those kind of recreational behaviors bet the bet boosts bet the you know bet some money line par people love the the, the 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 money line parlays look very fishy even some of the single game parlays i mean they want you betting the single game parlays if you bet nfl single game parlays that's a desired behavior you know and those single game parlays are priced by a model you know basically i mean our our company prices single game parlays they use the model I built, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's, you know, if I screw up my model, I mean, my prices are bad. That's just the bottom line, you know, and there's, you can kind of probe. And, and this is a thing that I think people who are familiar with DFS will be instantly, uh, the concept will click a ton is like, it, it is, is in a single game parlay, right? Like if, if, if you are, if as the moment you select the way I thought about it in DFS is I thought about it as an event space, right? And the moment you made a decision about something to put in your lo lineup, you've now focused on a certain piece of the event space. So the moment I decide to stack the Diamondbacks, well, I am now focusing only on the part of the event space where the Diamondbacks score 12 runs, 
right? I literally don't care about any other outcome because if that doesn't happen, I don't win, right? They have to score, you know, they have to get this many hits and total bases. I, whatever, to, total bases is more important than right, but whatever. Point is, the Diamondbacks have to go off. If they don't go off, then forget it, right? So now I'm looking only at the part of the advanced space where the Diamondbacks go off. And this came up in hockey in particular for DFS because I had to decide whether the goalies were positively or negative. So so I if I stack a bunch of penguins, right, then penguin skaters, then I'm now I'm looking only at the part of the event space where the penguins score six goals. So now what happens to the penguins goalie in the games where the penguins score six goals? Well it's not obvious. Is that good or bad for the penguins goalie? And I have an opinion about that based on data, but that's the thinking that you have to, well, you could pick apart the single gate parlays with exactly the same mindset. So the moment you plug a leg in, you've now limited the model to only those games, right? So if you say, give me, give me Chiefs win the first half by 21 and a half, right? Well, now all the possible outcomes, you're ignoring 99% of them. You're only looking at the ones where the, the, the model outcomes where the Chiefs happen to win by 21 and a half points in the first half. So you're looking only at the blowout games. And then you could say, in the blowout game, what happens? Does this running back get the running back yards in the blowout game? You know, and so you say, well, let me see what <laughs> let me see what the pricing widget says. So you say 21 and a half, and you say, okay, well, this running back over, you know, and then, and then that's how you just pick it apart. Because it's like my job as someone who built the model is I have to get all that crap right. Like I have to get all that. I have to know what happens in that game where the chiefs are ahead by 21 and a half. And I have to get the right player usage in that situation. I mean, it's just, it's an impossible task. And it's just, if you just pick it apart systematically like that and think about it in those terms, okay, now I want to only focus on this extreme outcome, you know, of games, what happens in those games? I mean, you know, in hockey, you look at a game where the such and such team is ahead by four goals, where well, their goalie gets pulled, probably, right? The the goalie that gave up all the goals probably gets pulled. The backup comes in. What does that say about props? I don't know. Maybe there's a prop on the goalie saves or something. Like, you know, and they have the more they want to add to these menus, the more they have to get all that stuff right. So so the 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 point of that rant was to say the, the NFL single game parlays, it's impossible to price all this stuff perfectly. But at the same time, this is exactly what sports just wants you betting. And it's also not necessarily obvious what your angle is. Like, you know, you just find the modeling errors and, right. well, you I know, mean, you're, you're I'm, not I'm betting steam. You. You're not betting information. You're just, you're just beating them. You're just beating the game heads up. You're just, you know, there's no trick. You're just like out modeling the model. You know, I'm I'm laughing yeah. because it's it, you're just describing stuff that that I do when I I try to mix my props in yeah. with SGPs and yeah. what I will do and there 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 are things available right these these are the types of things that I do that you probably shouldn't make public because then they will fix them uh, right. just like you know with the, the correlation on Prize Picks and Underdog uh, you know. That got out a little bit too much. Uh, I'll put stuff together and in the same game parlay, like experiment. I mean, right. you don't know what you're going to find and you don't know in what sports and what everything. So like I will look and I go, I got, I got these. And based on the model, I got these three props in a game that show value based on their normal pregame lines. And I go, they also make sense from a, like, like, Common right. sense of like, well, if this guy's getting all the yards, right, receiving, if, if I have his over six and a half receptions, over 85 and a half receiving yards, there's a reason why the second receiver on the team, I also have his under 54 and a half because right. basically the model is saying that that the target share, like, like that guy's going to get all of it. And then you put that into the SGP, but you don't stop there. You go, right. okay, even if even you don't even have to look at the model anymore, just go to there. And then if you wanted by trial and error, you could go to like every like over under type of thing. And you may find that the price changes the same, regardless if it's an over or an under. And you go, hmm, does that make any sense? Like right. is this the type of game where this guy yep. 
yep. gets all the yards and yep. this guy gets none of the yards. What is more likely to happen yes, exactly. for this player? And they're pricing it as if that's neutral. And you're like, I really don't think so, that's neutral. So the point I want to make is that that's essentially unfixable. Like, like I agree with you that if you publicize this kind of thing, like, the, the, the lowest hanging fruit gets picked off. And and right. for sure you can make these, you know, as someone who makes models and who has done this from the sports book side, basically, you know, it's it's it, it's uh, definitely possible to do better. It's definitely possible to try to account for things, but it's impossible to get it right all the time. Like it's just, it's just not possible. I have to know how every single skill position player in the league is used. And like, I have to, like in the future, like I'm not saying how were they used last week. I'm saying how are they going to be used this week? I don't know. I mean, and then I have to hire employees to do. I'm not. I can't do that personally. After a while, I mean, it's I got to do it for college football. I got to do it for hockey. I got to. You got to hire people to do it, right? And then, and then it's the work is only as good as their work, and you know, and then, and then the you there's an adverse, you know, the the yeah, whatever. It's you know, point is, it's impossible from a content. You know, the more options I want to offer you is the better. You know, the more skill position players I want to put on my menu, the more, you know, you could do receptions, you could do carries, you could do yards, you could do touchdowns, you could do sacks, you could do, I mean, the more I want to add, the more variables, and it's, it's exponential variables, right? It's like there's an, inf, you know, an exponentially increasing number of ways to combine these 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 options the more I add, right? If I, I have, if I have three options, I could combine them only certain ways. If I have four options, I've just multiplied, I've doubled the number of ways I could combine them. If I add one more, I've doubled it again, roughly, right? So it's, it's exponential. It's impossible to get it all right. It's just impossible to get it all right. So it, it will always be possible to pick apart single game parlay widgets using that logic. I mean, always. You, know, you may have to look harder. You may have to work harder. But right. it will always be possible because it's just so you can't a, get a, it right a, all the time. In a theoretical example, for instance, because I, I want to give something that DFS players would understand. Right. That we know that in, let's say, for, for NFL, for instance, uh, that not all pl- – like, like players don't have normal distributions, right? Every player has different types of distributions. And different players right. have different standard yep. deviations. I'm just yep. using theoretical examples. I'm not saying that an SGP doesn't price this in well. I'm just using a very basic example. They don't. Of, I'm going to tell you they don't, right, but go I'm on. Just, I'm just saying <laughs> that we're just going to assume. So let's take the difference between Keenan Allen and Tyreek Hill, right? Mm-hmm. I'm using ex- more extreme examples. Ty- Keenan Allen tends to have a lower A dot historically i'm not saying well now that mike williams is i'm not getting into the weeds on just the type of receiver that so keenan allen getting eight receptions for 85 yards right like they're just his distribution looks like this yeah tyree kill has like there are very rare games that keenan allen has five receptions for 150 yards correct because he doesn't operate as that type of receiver correct tyree kill has games where he gets five receptions for 150 yards so and three touchdowns <laughs> right so, right so for instance yeah. if you found i'm not saying that you do i'm just saying theoretically if you were if there there was the widget the sgp widget if you were to put uh, let's say they were both line the same. We're just going to say the lines, the over unders, the main market over unders were six and a half and eighty five and a half, or something like that. Right. If you went to the SGP wizard, it's quite possible. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying it's quite possible that if you took the alternate receptions and you mm-hmm. took alternate five plus receptions and then took the alternate one fifty, but it would tell you that. Wow, that's like negatively correlated. Right. And it and if you did that for Keenan Allen, it would show you a price. And if you did that the same exact thing, assuming their lines are exactly the same, and you did that for Tyreek Hill, it may show you the same price. Mm-hmm. Even though you know just common sense that yep. Tyreek Hill's distribution means that 
He's way more likely on five receptions yep. to score 150 yards than Keenan Allen. Why is this sports book treating the giving me the same price for both? It probably it's means because that it's it an impossibly well. complicated modeling task from the sports book said. Exactly. Exactly. You're exactly right. right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. I'm using a theoretical example. No, you're and this is a great example. It's a perfect example. It's a perfect example. Right. Yeah. Yep. And actually, and then you put then what you do is you 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 continually do SGPs on Tyree Kill and those types of flashy receivers on low receptions, high yardage, and a trader looks at you like you're an idiot. Because right. typically, typically you typically most people would go, Oh, over six receptions over a hundred yards, because yeah, obviously. And it's that's a, it's especially good if it's like may I mean Tyree Kill is like a if you could find someone with a similar distribution but less less of a name, where trader might not even have heard of it, or a college football, I mean college football players, like you said, you don't know any college. Well, nobody knows any college football players. There's like three people in the world nerdy enough to know all the college football players, right? Right. Like you know, so do it for college football. I mean, the exact same principle. I mean, no one's gonna know. Like no one's gonna figure out your angle if you're betting. You know. I mean, such and such, yeah, you in, know. In college, and in college football, like a team could have like four or five different receivers, but they're all used in different ways. And if, exactly. even if you look at college football projections, like a, 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 a heuristic is all just divide. Like if you're getting mean, because remember DFS projections are typically mean projections that you have to convert right. into medians. But as a heuristic, one would look at the, just divide the receiving yard mean by the reception mean. And the higher the number typically means the player has a higher average depth of the target because that's the right. reason. For why sure. That's like the target. definition so of that almost, right? Right, yeah. right. So if someone yeah. has a mean of 50 yards and a mean of five receptions, but one guy has a mean of 50 yards and two receptions, right. you're probably dealing with someone that. Exactly. That catch it, that. He get, only gets thrown the ball three times, but it's probably 60 yards down the field. Yep. And if he catches all three of them, you're fucking gold. And if he catches yeah, none exactly. of them, you're dead. Yes, exactly. And this is, and this is the thing. It's like, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just so hard. It's just so hard for someone to look at that action and figure out what you're doing unless they actually, especially, I mean, and you can even hide it more. Like you can, I mean, it's just hard for, if you pick models apart that way, it's just, it, it, especially if your angle is slightly not obvious, like it's just, I mean, I, the example we give in the book is like hockey with the hockey lines, like some forwards get moved from, you know, the second line to the first line. And someone has to keep track of that. Like if I'm offering hockey single game parlays, you know, I have to keep track of who's on all the lines at all times. Like if I want to be right all the, you know, and the players don't get used. Like the, some players are more correlated with like, Two players on the same full strength line are correlated, but some pairs of players are more correlated than other pairs of players for various reasons. And if you just know this, you know, you just know hockey and you know, oh, you know, these guys always play on the power play unit together, whereas these two do not, you know, these two always do. I mean, I'm not a hockey expert. I just know a little bit about it, but you know, like, if you follow hockey, you're going to know which pairs of skaters are going to be the most correlated, which pairs of skaters are going to be the least correlated. I mean, this is, there's no way anyone on the sportsbook end is, knows that. Like, zero people will know that. Right. So, like, so, I mean, they'll never figure out your angle. If your angle is, I only play the slightly more correlated pairs of skaters. Like, that's just not a thing. Nobody's ever going to figure out that, that that's a thing, you know, and just I mean, it's, it's, yeah, that's right. I mean, right, they, they, at the end of the day, they might see you keep winning and just say, I don't know why, why they're winning. So, but nuke, right? Like that can happen, but, but it, you're not betting in a way that's obvious, you know, what you're doing. Right. But also the obviousness, it comes with, like you mentioned the book and, and, and before we get out of here, that you say that, so, so a lot of the most successful sports betters that you've met and know yeah. are people that you wouldn't believe how many bets they place. And it's when you talk about like, if you find an error in an SGP, 
a weird error with a certain person and a certain right. situation, and you could exploit it maybe like 18 times a season. If you're betting the max on that one thing, like yes. it's quite possible after the eighth, ninth, tenth time. Yeah, that, that that, and they look at your betting action and they say, Why is this guy always in the parlay? Right. Right. Or whatever. Right. Yeah. But it's yeah. much it's much different than if you're doing that. You made well five thousand bets at the same time. It's just all going to blend in, yeah. And that's where that sentence comes from. It's possible that being able to find an endless supply of break-even bets might be the most valuable sports betting skill. It is, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think it is. You know, I, I, because I, I mean, I know, I, I, I know people who can do that, and they take it for granted. So they'll say things. Like, oh, you just, I would, you know, like, like they'll say things about sports, but, you know, I've talked to people when writing the book and they'll say things like, oh, well, if you know, this line's going to move to here and like, you know, and so you could just bet it. I mean, or whatever, right. You could just, and I'm like, they don't, nobody knows that. Like you're taking for granted this entire skill set that you have, right. When you, when you, when you say that stuff and, and yeah, so that's, you know, and that's, and, and. I think some of the people that have that skill set don't understand. I mean, they do. If you point it out to them and you're like, no, it's only because you're really good at this that you can, like, do that, you know. And they're like, oh, okay, yeah, you're right. It's, it's like <laughs> but they do. They, and, and they'll intentionally make the break-even bets. Like, they'll be like, yes, break-even, boom, click, you know. The, 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 the impulse is yes. <laughs> to everything they like it's not no let's let's be selective it's yeah so it's very analogous to in in poker that like like for instance i i ran a card room in new york city and if i was playing in a private game or anything like that a lot of times after the last hand of the night you know packing up or whatever like that someone would be like they would have 13 bucks left outside of their rack you know that was break that Past that broke it and they'd right. say let's all let's all put in 13 bucks and deal it out right, right? so basically just it's it's just, it's yeah, just yeah. a gamble there's no rake there's no nothing. For 13 bucks right right there was there's someone there's someone that i was that i knew that was a very good poker player that would come to yep. that game also and be like i'm not gambling on 13 dollars right you know exactly what? i was the first person to say okay 13 because i don't want to like, I mean, it's a break it's a break it's a bet you lose zero EV doing it, and it, I mean, it's just saying no to that, you've instantly branded yourself, right? right? Like, the moment you say no to that, now everyone at that table forever knows about how, about how your decision-making is going to work going forward, right? You've just told them something damning about yourself for free. You didn't even get anything for it. All you did was avoid a zero EV proposition. And you, you're, you're, you've given it. Yeah, it's terribly. It's, it's, but it's just, right. it's, it's just all, human it's nature. It's how people. Human. Also, also it's, it's similar to hand, like, right, like another thing that I that I would do at, at poker tables is that if I came to a point in a hand heads up, where I know that we're flipping, like I'm, pr I'm pretty obviously flipping. Like, like I have a big combo draw. Like if some fifteen right. out draw, and I know I'm up against an over pair, and. You know, the guy shoves and I'm getting the right, I'm getting like about yeah. the right odds. Yeah, I, I basically sure. ask the guy, I, and maybe I'm getting slightly below the, I, I basically, if I'm close, I just ask the guy, do you want me to gamble or not? Do you want, do you want to gamble? Because I know right. it's a break even thing. And if they say no, I fold. And if they right. say yes, I'll, I'll, you want right. action? I'll give you action. But those right. little things, like, yeah. especially, in poker, if you're playing against very yeah. similar clientele, like they people could look at you and go, "Hey, Jordan, he's a good poker player." And yes, I know he's strong, and I, he doesn't gamble that much, but he does give act. We still yeah. want him in the game because he does. Yeah. He, he he doesn't. He still plays more hands than like this other guy that has the headphones on and and right. plays. You know, V pips eighteen percent. It's like yeah. they don't want that guy at the table. I'm V pipping twenty six percent. If, you're, if your the, natural personality is the headphones guy, it's just very hard to it's very hard to shake all those little 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 instincts to to knit it up here and there. It just is. I mean, I, I'm kind of. I mean, I don't I, be the headphones I mean, guy in the sports for the sports books. Yeah. Yep. Yep. 
for sure. Uh, this has been an interesting conversation. I hope people got stuff. I hope I didn't ruin everything that's in the book. No, it's, I, I think it's great. I don't think you did. I'm I'm delighted that you picked your favorite. I, your favorite sentence might be my favorite sentence. So I, I <laughs> makes me happy. Uh, Interception, The Secrets of Modern Sports Betting by Ed Miller. You get it on Ed. What, what's, what's the way, Ed, that you make the most Amazon. Of money? I, I, I used to try to talk these things off my website. I get to Amazon. <laughs> they win. Amazon, let them take the 40% cut. Amazon wins. It all, it all through hours. Yeah. So just search interception Ed Miller or whatever on Amazon. You, you make, you make more on the hard copy though, right? Cause it's a little bit more expensive. I do make a little more on the hard copy. I, I think, well, let's see. I probably make a I little more on the hard copy. Buy whatever hard you copy. need. Buy whatever you need. Yeah. It's, 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 I get, I don't know. It's like, it's a 50 something percent royalty rate off of the very anyway. Yes. I need to add to my stack. I need, you sent right? me a review copy via PDF. I, I'm going to order it yeah. in 19 Too I cheap to send out. So, well, I, I couldn't get the paperback review copies. I, I don't waste time. Like, you know, like a traditional publisher, they'll, they'll like plan a release like six months in ahead. And they'll, I'm like, that, I, I like finished writing the book like eight days ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I didn't even know you were coming out with it out. until I saw on Twitter yet last week. I'm like, I wrote it very quickly, and then and then the moment it was done, I'm like, out. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> yeah. So. And uh, you're on Twitter at Ed Miller Poker, even though you Ed Miller Poker. Says you don't yeah. talk about poker anymore. Well, you know. Why don't you change the dandle? I I, I kind of like it. At this point, and what do I change it to? I mean, the problem is Ed Miller is just way too common a name. There's like a million people named Ed Miller, and then so I have to have some kind of disambiguator. And what, like Ed Miller, handsome? I don't know what would I? <laughs> Ed Miller, <laughs> incredibly charismatic. Ed Miller. I mean, I don't know. Or you want to hide? Just... You want to hide yourself? You're the Ed Miller, the fish. Ed right? Miller, wanna, the fish. The fish. Types of names. Dude, yes. dude, Ed, uh, Ed, in in the head to head lobby in DFS. You see some of the funniest names. Yeah. You see him like, oh, Come get my money. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. The same for online poker. You would see a lot of that in online poker. It's like, you know, always calls the river, right? Right. Exactly. Yeah. I always call. Yeah. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So get the book, get logic of sports betting. It's required reading. If if you're going to get involved in props and sports betting and anything, even if you're not, even if you play DFS and you enjoy the intellectual puzzle, like it's it's an interesting read. It's it's not like professorial. You talk in normal, like your books are always like conversational in tone. They're not like textbooks. Right. That that's the in. that's I I got a, I got somebody I got a slightly bad review via DM this morning, uh, and he was like, I wanted more math, and I'm like, well, you know, it's just not it's not what I do. In my well, you book, do concepts. I, You're very similar. I do concepts. I don't yeah, want, exactly. I don't want to put formulas. Yeah. I, how to think the right way is better than right. knowing, like, I think, you I, get in those I think it's more, on Twitter. I, I think it, you know, I mean, I've thought about writing a book about the nitty gritty of how to build models, and I, I, don't, I, I just don't think it would have much of an audience. I think. You know, I think it gives a lot of information away. <laughs> I mean, I mean, this, I, I, I feel like I hit the sweet spot with finding something that will will entertain and educate without necessarily giving all my edge <laughs> my personal edge if you will so thanks so. for coming on you were on uh two years ago in episode 47 so if people want to go back and talk about the logic of sports betting back then so you can uh, yep. have a little a, a little compendium and uh when you come out with another book when all the edges have dried up in your front right because people are going to say oh ed ed let yeah. the cat out of the bag yeah. Do you do you feel that? But before we get out of here, do you feel that? Because I've I've seen chatter with your book. It's like, oh, we don't want this information to get out. Do you think that sports betting information, like what you have in the logic of sports, like the betting, the, 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 the logic? I I think my personal opinion is neither book spilled. The, my my personal opinion is this is all public information that I've essentially, you know, created a little. I, I think my value add is that I've all put it in one place and told a little easy to read story about it. I, I don't think like the people who are serious about this stuff know all, all everything in the books. There's no, but, but, do, you, no, but do you think, yeah. do you think in general, like to, to, 
make it like poker that like I know poker it's peer to peer so you're not playing against the sports book itself but it's 2023 all these poker books are out they're poker trading sites yet I could still go to the my 25 game locally and more than half the players don't even understand like yeah, this is my take. Oh, I mean, like they don't even do that. So, like, so there's a, there's certainly no question. There's no question that, that our first book certainly did not make sports betting markets any tougher. Like, it just there was no information in it that would would it 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 told you how the markets worked and how the lines get made, but you couldn't read that book and then and then go be like, I can make a you know, I can make a NFL point spread better now. I mean, it's just not. What's in the book? It's not the the information in the book. And the same with this one. This book is 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 about you know everything. I mean, a lot of what we talked about in the in the in this conversation about these ideas. But as I said, like there's no there's no I can I've been screaming you're you're bad at making your odds for five years on Twitter. I even started a company. I made I mean models. I tried to do it, but I mean it's just it's impossible to fix a lot of this stuff. Like or or or. I think they. I think the industry should do more to try to fix some of it. But even if they did more to fix it, even if they listened to me, even if somebody, you know, at the big sports book said, you know what, this Ed Miller is the smartest guy I've ever heard. I'm gonna go go work on everything he just said and fix everything that he pointed out. Like it still would be broken because the, fundamentally the modeling task is too big, right? Like fundamentally, if they want to offer a single game parlay product the way they want to offer it, it's just hard. It's just a hard problem. There's no way to make it airtight. You know, can they make it better than it is now? Yes. But, you know, there's no way to make it airtight. There's no way to, as as you said, like, you know, what's the right answer for how many minutes so-and-so is going to get in the NBA game tonight? There is no right answer. It's not like you can read my book and be like, oh, now I know how many minutes, you know, so-and-so is going to get tonight. I mean, it's, it's just an ongoing process, and it's whoever does the work and, and, and does it better. I mean, that, that, to me, that's what it is. So I, I disagree with anyone who, who thinks I'm, that the books destroy any – if it destroyed your edge, I mean, go find a new edge. Because it's there's tons out there. I mean, honestly, that's my that's take like on that. Fun, that's like the go fuck yourself. I mean, like, I mean, and and and, and I'm and I wouldn't say that about everything. Like, there's people that there's people that, that that there's there's other forms of AP gambling where that are extremely sensitive to specific bits of information being released about them. And I won't release that information. I mean, I know some of it. I'm not gonna put that out there because I'm. Because because once I say it, it, yeah, it'll get fixed and then it's gone. Like it's, you know, there's no. Yes, that like that thinking is correct sometimes, but but I don't think it's true about sports betting. It's just it, the the modeling job is too. I, I'm saying modeling is hard. I mean, the, if, I, if I had to boil down this book, it's it's all these lines come from models and modeling is hard. I mean, there's your summary. Uh, and that's not going to change. That's just an internal truth. So, right, and the book and yeah. the book is more about thinking in those terms. It's not. Yeah. Here are the angles. Here's the specific angle. Right. Here's the you know the classic you know the second half totals in NBA games. Yeah, go bet right. second. There's, that's not. Right. A, no, exactly, exactly. But yeah. but it's how to find those things. There, you're saying in the book, go out and because of how everything is is organized, there are probably tons of these things. You're not sure which what they are. But right. if you understand how all this stuff works, feel free to Correct. go out and see what you can find. Exactly. If you have that mindset, right. you probably can go out and find something. If you have that mindset and you begin to get the hang of finding it, you will find it all over the place. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yep. So Ed Miller Poker, even though he doesn't talk about poker on Twitter. <laughs> Interception, the uh, secrets of modern sports betting. Get that. Get the logic of sports betting. Then obviously, 15 hour audio DFS masterclass for daily fantasy sports at theoryofdfs.com.